All right, here are our solutions to perfect problem three from Math 251. Um, four parts to this, I think. First part, we're asked to basically, okay, the product rule tells you what's the derivative of a product of two functions. I'm asking you to come up with a product rule for three functions. So find the derivative of f of x times g of x times h of x, three of them in here. Um, I'll be a little shorthand. I won't write the x's everywhere. I'll just write the functions as f and g. Um, okay, so the way to do this is first realize that we have our product rule that gives us the derivative of a product of two functions. So if we're taking the derivative of a function f times a function g, it's the derivative of f times g plus the derivative of g times f. So we can use that fact to come up with the derivative of f times g times h, what the question is asking for here. Um, and I think the easiest way to do it will be to be following this hint and that is really we're just trying to figure out the derivative of a product of two things. First thing is f times g and the second thing is h. So that's what these extra parentheses kind of represent. Um, really we're just trying to take the derivative of a product of two things. It's just one of those things we'll need the product rule to figure out. All right, so using the product rule, anytime you have to figure out the derivative of something times something, first something being f times g, second something being h, what you do, what this product rule tells us, is take the derivative of the first something. So, okay, we're going to need to take the derivative of our first something, which is f times g in this case, and we're going to multiply that by the second something, which is h in this case. And then to that, we want to add the derivative of the second something, so we'll notate that as h prime, and multiply that by the first something, not the derivative of it, just it, which in this case is f times g. So we're almost done here. Um, what this notation is saying is we still have to take the derivative of what's in these parentheses, but everything else is done. So what is the derivative of f times g? Well, we can figure that out using the product rule over here. So what the derivative of f times g is, is the derivative of f times g plus the derivative of g times f. So this first part is equal to this. But remember, that needs to be multiplied by h. And then to that I want to add h prime times f times g. Um, I guess I don't need those parentheses anymore. They were just to kind of emphasize where things were coming from, so maybe I'll write it like this. Um, and this is a perfectly good formula. You could stop right there, but I'm going to go a little bit further. I'm going to distribute this h in. I'm going to say that my final derivative is equal to f prime times g times h, f prime times g times h, plus g prime times f times h, so that's what I get when I distribute this h into this term, plus h prime times f, I guess I haven't been writing the dots in there, times f times g. So I will call this my final answer, and Kind of a new rule. I don't think it's worth memorizing this, but really what this is is the product rule if you're multiplying three things together. Um, and basically what it says is take the derivative of one of the three things, leave the other two alone. Take the derivative of the second of those two things, leave the other two alone. Take the derivative of those third of those three things and leave the other two alone. All right, maybe that went a little long. I'll try to do this one a little quicker. This one we're asked to, same thing, use the product. Now we'll need the quotient rule also to come up with this derivative. So we're trying to figure out what is the derivative of f times g divided by h. Make sure that's an h. Um, and the way we'll do this is we'll say, all right, the quotient rule tells me what to do anytime I'm taking the derivative of something divided by something. And that's what I have here, something divided by something. So what I do is I take the derivative of the top, which in this case is f times g what this is saying right here, take the derivative of the top and multiply it by the bottom, which is h. And then from that, subtract the derivative of the bottom and multiply that by the top. And be careful you're not done. You still have to multiply by the bottom squared, the denominator squared. The denominator is h, so h squared. And so we're not done here because we still have to take the derivative of f times g, but that's just the product rule. So, okay, we know that that derivative would be f prime g 
plus g prime f. And then what we have to do is multiply that by h, and then subtract h prime times f times g, and divide that by h squared. And a little bit of algebra just to get this a little bit neater looking would be f prime g h plus g prime f h minus h prime f g all divided by h squared. And so what we've done is we've come up with general formulas to solve questions that are in this form or this form, which you can memorize or you can just re-derive them every time you need them. Either way is fine. Um, and then in part two, what we're asked to do is use those formulas you have to figure these things out. Um, or I guess this is number three and number four. What I want to point out is three and four is asking for the derivative of the same thing. x to the negative one is the same as one over x. So these answers should be the same. You're just supposed to get them using two different methods. So, okay, it might be handy to copy this formula here. The derivative of a product of three things is this guy. So we have the derivative. Actually, I'll copy the, I'll pause this and copy those down. This formula here and another one below, it'll make these problems relatively easy. I'm asked to find the derivative of x to the negative one times e to the x times sine of x. So, okay, we'll just pretend that our f is x to the negative one, our g is e to the x, and our h is sine of x. And then it'll fit this formula we have here. So what we'll need to know is f prime, g prime, and h prime. And we know all those things. We know that the derivative of x to the negative one power is negative one x to the negative two power, using the power rule. Derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. And the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. I gave that to you in a little hint here in case you do this before we get to that section in our book. Um, 2.3 or 3.3, I think is where that is. Um, and now that we have all these pieces, we can just apply this formula right here. We can say, let's see, let's get a new color here, that the derivative of x to the negative 1, e to the x, sine of x, is equal to, well, let's see, f prime times g times h. That's going to be negative x to the negative 2, e to the x, sine of x, f prime, g, and h. And then to that, I want to add g prime, f, h. g prime is e to the x. f is x to the negative 1. h is sine of x. And then to that, I want to add, hopefully all have room here, h prime times f times g. Okay, h prime is cosine of x. f is x to the negative 1. And g is e to the x. Put this x in parentheses so that we know it's the argument just for our cosine function here. I don't want you to think we're taking the cosine of x times x to the negative 1 times e to the x. Um, and this right here is our derivative. I guess you could rewrite this if you really wanted x to the negative 2 power is the same as dividing by x squared and x to the negative one power is dividing by x. Maybe I'll write e to the x first. So really equivalent to that is this. This is a little bit prettier and it might make it easier for us to see how this matches up with below. Um, maybe we even go one step further yeah, why not? Let's find a common denominator, put these guys all together. So our common denominator would be x squared, so we'll have to multiply this and this both by x, x over x. And what we get is, um, how should I write this? x e to the x sine of x, that's this middle term, plus x e to the x cosine of x, that's this last term, minus e to the x sine of x, all divided by x squared. And it's fine if you want to leave this in this form. It's just a little bit ugly. I think this one's prettier, and I think this will be easier for us to reconcile that it's the same in number four. And moving on to number four, now we have to find the derivative of this, which remember should be the same answer as we got right here, because this is equivalent to this. 
but we want to find it using this formula here. Okay. Um, the good news is that our F, G, and H are very similar. I guess I'll write them down again. Um, let's switch colors. Um, so this tells us how to take the derivative of a product of two th functions divided by another function. Um, the two functions that are getting multiplied together here in the numerator are e to the x and sine of x. So our f is e to the x and our g is sine of x. And the function that's in the denominator, our h, is just x. And the good news about those three functions is we know each of their individual derivatives. Derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. And the derivative of x is just 1. This is x to the 1 power. Use the power rule, you get 1 times x to the 0, which is just 1. Um, all right, now we can figure out that the derivative of e to the x sine of x divided by x, figure out what it's equal to by using this formula here. Um, let's see, what we want is f prime times g times h. Okay, f prime is e to the x, g is sine of x and h is x, f prime, g, h. And to that we want to add g prime, f, h. So here's g prime, cosine of x. f is e to the x, h is x. And from that we want to subtract h prime, f, g. h prime is 1, f is e to the x, g is sine of x. But then we're not done, we have to divide by h squared. Our h is x, so h squared would be x squared. And what we have here, let's see, does that match up exactly? I think it does. Maybe I'll write it again just so it looks the exact same. We got x, e to the x, sine of x, plus x, e to the x, cosine of x, x, e to the x, cosine of x, oops, cosine of x, minus e to the x sine of x divided by x squared. Throw a little check by that to explain why I was trying to rewrite that in a different form. Um, but this is the answer, the derivative for this mess, and that is the end of this perfect problem.